Hello my friends and welcome to Paulina Art. Today I'm going to be painting these pretty purple parrots and I'm going to show you step by step how to create this nice bulky background, how to create the branch, how to sketch the birds and how to paint them. I'm using the one stroke or double load technique to create the plumage on the birds. If you would like to see how I painted these purple parrots step by step, stay with me and let's paint together. Today I'm using the Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. I'm going to link up on the screen the review and swatches I did for this acrylic paint. The colors that I'm using today are titanium white, ivory black, burnt amber or dark brown, burnt sienna, or dioxazine purple or purple, alizarin crimson or dark red, hooker's green or dark green, light olive green, and cadmium yellow deep. Of course, you can use whatever paint you have at home with similar colors. Today I'm working on 9 by 12 canvas which I've already prepared the night before with a coat of gesso. I'm going to start by doing the background and I want to create a, a bulky effect background, bulky blurry. And for that I'm going to use this sponge. This sponge I rinse it in water and remove the excess so it's slightly damp. I'm going to start with the yellow. And I'm applying the color in circular motions. Now I'm going to apply the lighter green. I'm going around the areas that I painted with the yellow. I don't want to cover them up. And I'm going to alternate between the yellow and the light green. I'm going to add some of the dark green, but on the parameters of the painting. And I can do the sides of the canvas as well. So basically I want the light to be in the center area. And I'm going to keep working until I'm satisfied with the way the background looks. Okay, I'm happy with the background. I'm now going to pick up a small blending brush. This is actually a makeup brush, a Real Techniques blending brush, but you can use a small brown blending brush. I'm going to link these ones on the description box below. Even though they are makeup brushes, they work really good for blending actual paintings. So I have some white on the brush, not a lot, just a very small amount of white. And I'm going to start doing small circles, some larger, some smaller, to give the bulky effect to the background, nice and soft. This creates a effect of distance and blurry, a blurry effect that is very pretty. And I randomly place them where I feel they're going to look good. I'm not going to do too many in the center because this is where the birds are going to be. And I'm softly creating the circle with my brush. I 
have the light green on the brush and I'm softly going to blend some of the edges. Okay, I'm happy with the background and because the layers of paint I applied are very, very thin, the paint is already dry. It took about five minutes to dry. I'm going to be doing my sketch with Crayola chalk. Because my canvas is nine by 12, I'm going to divide it in the middle, which is six. You can do the same with any size of canvas you have. You can do the measurements you still need to divide your canvas in the center and again in the middle this way. So this is going to give us four equal quadrants and we can place the birds where we want them. I think I'm going to move to white. You might be able to see the white better. Okay, I'm going to do the branch. The branch is going to start in the center and it's going to come across and up a little bit into this side. So this is the branch where the birds will be sitting. And I'm going to add another branch coming down this way. And maybe one going here and maybe maybe a branch coming up here and maybe one up. So I'm going to give you a close up. Of course you can do the branches going in any direction you want. So let's go ahead and paint the branches. And for that, I'm going to use a round brush. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna and some burnt amber and white and it's very messy on my brush like this i'm not over blending and i'm going to start pressing the brush to create the branch okay my branch starts here And this creates effortlessly the effect of a branch. And I have this branch coming down. And I want my branches end up a little pointy. This makes them look better. And I have another branch coming up here. And another one coming up this way. And another one going in this direction. I'm picking up some of the dark brown, the burnt amber, and I'm going to put it underneath to create a shadow effect. And I'm still just pressing the brush. Now I have white with the burnt sienna. I'm going to add some of this at the top to give the effect of light on the branch. And if I want more shadow, which I do, I'm going to add a dab of black on the bottom of the branches to create even more, more of a shadow and light effect. to move to a smaller round brush 
and I'm mixing some of the dark brown with the black to create this very dark brown and I'm going to add some some smaller branches where we're going to have leaves later just to make it very pretty The branch where the birds are sitting is established. We have to wait for this to dry so we can place our birds in here. Okay, I allowed all of this to dry and I'm going to go ahead and sketch the two parrots and I'm going to be using the white chalk. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Canvas is divided in the center here and this way and I'm going to place the first bird in this area so his body is going this way I'm just drawing a line it's a little bit perpendicular like that and the other bird is going to be the same way he's going to be sitting on this side of the branch so I'm going to draw another line here okay so i have two lines now the top of the birds is going to be around here approximately i want to leave a little bit of space at the top i don't want the heads to be right up there paintings don't look nice when the subject is right at the top you need to leave a margin around the canvas okay so i'm going to do the body of this bird the head is going to be facing this way and the head of this one this way okay so i'm going to draw a couple of circles these circles are going to be the body they don't have to be perfect circles but approximate circles there's one i'm going to do another circle the same size so there's one circle two circle and here's going to be the third circle which is represents the head I'm going to draw a line here that this is going to be the shoulders and I'm going to bring this down and create the shape of the body like this and this is the head so I'm going to join it to to the body and I'm going to draw a line here. This is where the beak is going to be. And another line here. This is where the eye is going to be. I know this is, hopefully this is not too hard for you to see. The wings are gonna overlap a little bit in here. The tail is the same length as the body and the head. So I'm just measuring with my fingers and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to draw a line here. This is where the tail ends. And I'm going to draw a line from the center of the body down. And this is going to be the tail. So there's three circles. One, two, that's the body. And the third circle is the head there's a line that comes here and this is where the beak starts and from the beak to the top of the head there's another line where we're going to place the eye we're going to do the same with this bird this one is a little bit lower so i'm going to draw a line here this is going to be the shoulders i'm going to draw the circles the same size as these ones so there's one two and three is the head here and i'm going to draw a line and this is where the beak is going to come okay and i'm going to draw a line up here this is where the eye is going to be placed and i'm going to join the circle 
into the body. I'm going to draw the body coming down here. In the center are the wings, and this one overlaps a little bit, this one. And again, the tail is going to be the same size as the whole body with the head, so I'm going to bring it down and draw a line here. And the tail is going to follow the way the bird is sitting. This line goes all the way down like this, because we don't want the tail to look out of place. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close up. Those are the hands. And again, the bodies are three circles. Two are the body and one is the head, which we have joined the head to the body. And then the tail is the same size as the body and the head. Okay, now that the birds have been established, I'm going to pick up a fine liner brush and I'm going to mix some of this dark brown the burnt amber with a drop of black. I want a very dark brown and I'm going to add lots of water to make it nice and inky. And I'm going to draw the birds with this just to make sure I know where they are and they don't disappear on the layers of paint. So I'm going to start with the head I'm going to follow what I sketch here with with the chalk and um, they have some plumage at the back and I establish the eye to be right in here and the beak in this area The nice thing of doing the painting with chalk is that you can go back and redo it until you're happy. I'm also going to attach a link to the final painting and you can use it, you can save it and use it as your, as your pattern if you're not comfortable doing the drawing. But I encourage you to try it because once you can draw your own designs, it's going to give you a lot of freedom to do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to do the body here. The shoulders are a little bit slanted because of the way the bird is sitting. And the other wing comes out about here. And this wing is going to overlap. And then the long tail, we want to follow the body. Okay, this bird is done. I'm going to go ahead and go over this bird. And you can make adjustments at this point as well, if you don't like something. You can always make corrections. At this point, look at your birds and make all the corrections you need to. Make sure the bodies make sense with the head, that they're not too wide, and then the tails the same length as the whole upper part of the body. Approximately, I mean, these measurements don't need to be exact. We're gonna go ahead and put a base coat on these birds. But before I do that, I'm going to pick up a dry brush and get rid of all the chalk marks I did.
Okay, my birds are well centered. There's enough room at the top and on the sides and at the bottom. And this is what you want to do when you sketch. I'm going to add now a base coat. And for that, I'm going to use a round brush. I'm going to mix the white, titanium white, with alizarin crimson, which is a cool dark red to create this nice pink color. I want to have some pink undertones under the feathers. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this to cover all the yellow and branches. But I'm going to leave this these lines that defines the bird. I'm going to leave these lines, my sketch lines. mistakes just correct with a damp brush I make lots of mistakes I'm always correcting and that's okay I'm now going to mix a gray color with white and black now I'm going to paint the beak area and again I'm going to leave some of the the drawing that I did. I'm going to paint the eye. But I just want to establish where they are and how they are looking at each other. With a small filbert brush, which is a flat brush with rounded edges. I'm going to define some of the areas and I have black on the brush and I'm basically going to define some of the areas that I, I need to see before I start adding my layers of paint. There's some darkness here. And then where the wings over fold, fold over each other. And then the tail starts here. Just, just a little bit of a reference for when I start adding the layers of paint. This underpainting is going to help me when I start adding the colors on the birds. defining the feathers just a little bit I haven't had a chance to paint for a couple of days I've been very busy but this is a good thing because all these layers of paint are completely dry and what I'm going to do now is with a brown brush I'm going to pick up the purple that I'm using and I'm going to add water to make it very light not thick paint but very light okay and with this i'm going to apply a coat on the birds but see this adds a beautiful purple pinky color instead of just a very cool purple. This adds some warmth to the color. And because the background is yellow, the purple really stands out. Okay, I'm going to start adding the feathers, the plumage on the birds. And for that, I'm going to use 
an angle brush. You can use a flat brush if you don't have an angle brush. And I'm going to be using Folk Art Floating Medium. This is an acrylic medium that will help the colors that I'm using blend easier and the paint will flow better on the canvas as well. And I'm going to pick up some floating medium, cover my brush and remove the excess at the same time. And I'm going to pick up white at the toe and purple at the heel and I'm going to blend And I'm going to add a tiny drop of red just to make the purple color a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to start painting the feathers from the bottom up. This way they're going to overlap better. So I'm going to start from the bottom. The white is at the bottom. I'm just sliding my brush and every time I go on the canvas I load the brush with paint okay I'm going to do the other side and I'm pressing the white at the bottom and sliding the brush up And I'm just cleaning up if I go over where I don't want to go. And I'm going to overlap more feathers on the tail. And I'm going to do this wing because this one is under. So I want to do those ones first. I'm going to press the brush with the white at the bottom. And I'm going to bring it across. And if the brush starts dragging, just add a little bit more of the floating medium. I'm going to add another feather here, overlapping this one. I'm coming all the way up. Okay, I'm going to start adding feathers in from this point up because these large feathers are going to be overlapping. I'm following the shape of the body and I'm doing shorter feathers up here and I can add some shorter ones this way without overdoing it we want this painting to have more of a loose effect okay I'm going to do the this big wing now and this time I'm going to press the brush this way to create this nice wing and I'm going to overlap the feathers so I'm going to press the brush with the white at the bottom and I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to continue I'm going to do another feather I'm going to go over it to add more white and you can go over the feathers if you're not happy with them. Okay. And again, I'm following the shape of the body. I'm 
I'm going to add some small feathers in here. Okay, so the body is done. Let's do the head and the brush is loaded the same way. And I'm going to start again from the bottom up and I'm going to do this, these feathers on this side. I'm gonna clean the eye so I know where it is. And I'm going to continue adding feathers coming in. And I want the darker purple in this area. Okay, the feathers of this bird are done. I'm going to go ahead and do this one exactly the same way off camera. Otherwise, the video is going to be just too long. Okay, the two birds are done. I'm now moving to a small filbert brush. And I have purple, just the purple. And I'm going to intensify the face just like I did this one. I'm just going to add the darker in this area. And I'm still moving my brush, creating the effect of feathers. So I'm just flicking the brush. I'm going to add a little detail around the eye here. I'm also going to add some of these dark feathers around the neck area. Just flicking and creating some, a bit of shadow. And I can also add some darker feathers in here, just to add a little more dimension. Emphasize the purple color. same small filbert brush I'm going to pick up purple and a bit of black and with this color I'm going to emphasize the end of the beak you can use some liner brush if it's easier and I'm going to flick the color with a clean brush just to blend it a little bit like that and now i have a liner brush just to be more precise with the with the point of the beak and then i'm going to do this area And I'm going to blend with a clean brush. And I have white on my small filbert brush. And I'm going to add that at the top here to add a bit of a highlight to the beak. And again, I'm going to blend a little bit with a clean brush. And with the same purple black, I'm going to go over the eye and around the eye. And I'm going to mix white with a drop of yellow. I want a very, very pale yellow. And with this color, I'm going to go on this part of the eye. And I can even add a little bit of a white shine in there. Okay, I'm going to do the same on this face. I'm going to do it off camera, but it's going to be exactly the same. 
Okay, the birds are done. The last thing I'm going to do in this painting is add leaves to these branches. And for that, I'm going to use my angle brush again. You can use a flat brush too. And I have the dark green on the brush. And I'm going to add some leaves, the dark leaves first. Just pressing my brush to create the leaves, very easy. And I can add a few with the light green. See if I like it. The light green doesn't show too much. But that's okay. Okay, my friends, the painting is done. I'm going to give you a close up. hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn something new. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future content from me. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.